What's up? Welcome to In the Know. Today's topic, we're going to talk about the Bradley Beal trade and what that means for the Pelicans and the Western Conference. Bradley Beal was traded from the Washington Wizards to the Phoenix Suns for Chris Paul, Landry Shamit, and a couple second round picks. So we're going to discuss all of that um, in, in today's little segment. So tune in. All right, so today's video, uh, all about the Bradley Beal trade. Um, basically, the Phoenix Suns are continuing their all-in approach to acquire stars around Devin Booker. They didn't even have to give up DeAndre Aiden, Chris Paul, uh, Landry Shamit, a couple second-round picks, got the job done. Um, obviously, the trade is not finalized yet because the Wizards would like to Flip Chris Paul, maybe Landry Shamit somewhere else. Looks like Chris Paul might be on his way to the Los Angeles Clippers, um, and that'll be interesting. Uh, one of the reasons Bradley Beal did not cost a lot to acquire was because of the no-trade uh, clause in his contract. Essentially, he would have to agree to any place um, that the Wizards were trying to trade him to. So Phoenix was basically the main one, and they were able to acquire him for pennies. This in my opinion, uh, has important ramifications for the Pelicans over the next couple of years, uh, just and the Western Conference in general. If you take a look around uh, the West, you have the Nuggets who just won, the Suns who are loading up, the Clippers who are not going anywhere and looking to acquire Chris Paul. Um, the Warriors will likely be trying to continue to build a championship team around um, Steph Curry and you have the Lakers, as long as LeBron and AD are there. I know LeBron threatened retirement. I don't believe that's happening anytime soon. They're going to be going for it. So you have all of these teams that are uh, in, in contender status or pseudo contender status uh, that are continuing to build, 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 acquire, acquire, acquire. You have a couple up and coming teams, obviously Memphis. Uh, they're going to be interesting with John Morant's suspension out for 25 games. We'll see if the players union is able to cut that down or not. Um, and the Kings who are, you know, on the, on the upswing and there's still Dallas to think about. Um, obviously they are, you know, they were in the lottery this year. They have a decision to make regarding Kyrie Irving, but you know, anytime Luke is on your team, you, you got to figure that they're going to try to build a competitive team around him unless he asks out. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't really want to talk about the trailblazers or, or the, uh, or the Timberwolves, but, um, very real chances those teams are going to pursue playoff birds, but that's not the focus of today's show. The focus of today's show are the teams that are going to be trying to push for, for contention or, or, or championship contention. Um, and you have these contenders, these upper echelon teams, these high spenders that are continuing to go all in. They're not deterred by the implementation of this new CBA thus far. At least the Suns haven't been. Um the Nuggets won't be. And I, I think I agree with them because the harsher penalties, some of the harsher penalties take a year or two to kick in. Um, and and if your title window is now, you might as well maximize around those teams. And then you can hopefully try to get out of the tax when the new TV deal comes in, in two years. And so uh, I don't blame that strategy. But where that leaves the Pelicans is you have a bunch of these teams caught in an arms race uh, to try to win the West. And, and the Pelicans have important decisions to make because – hey, if, if these teams are treating this window as a two-year window, essentially before the new TV deal comes in, the Pelicans have to be cognizant of that as well because in two years, the Trey Murphy deal kicks in. Brandon Ingram is a free agent if he hasn't been signed to an extension. Um, and CJ is an expiring, and Herb Jones' is, is deal is has kicked in as well. And so they have to decide, uh, in my opinion, which direction they want to go. So I think they have a few options. One, they could try to get in on the arms race go all in, uh, try to become this taxpaying team while it's less punitive to do so early um, and try to get out later, especially, you know, if, if you know, Brandon Ingram is going to become a free agent and you can get out of Zion's contract if he gets hurt or, or whatever the case may be. Um, you have that option. I, I don't think it's a likely option. I don't recommend it from a strategic sense, but, you know, hey, if they had if they had a big baller owner, maybe that is uh, <laughs> that is what they'd be trying to do. I think the second option um, likely – the one that's probably going to play out is they just run it back. Um, I, I've talked about the risks of, of running it back, you know, kind of staying in this spot, trying to build on, uh, around this core. Um, I think particularly with regards to the new media deal coming in, 
if you run it back, you position yourself to be in a situation where you've locked in this core um, and it's just gotten more expensive. So, for example, Brandon Ingram, Trey Murphy, and Herb Jones are making about 29% of the salary cap right now combined, all three of them combined. Uh, If you're running it back um, two years from now, when all of these players are on new deals, Brandon Ingram is going to be on a deal that is, accounts for 30% of the max, uh, 30% of the cap um, by himself. And then Trey Murphy is probably going to be accounting for, you know, 20, 21, 22% himself. And then Herb Jones is probably going to be accounting for, you know, 10 to 15% um, if, if the Pelicans are, don't get lucky or, or decide to go in a different direction. So you're looking at something like over half your cap tied to those three players, right? Um, and then you have Zion in, in his contract. Well, thankfully, his contract's going to be a little bit of a value if they decide to hold on to it. Uh, if they decide, you know, he's going to be a part of the future, you know, being at the 25% max rate in, in this kind of a, a cap environment where the cap will uh, increase at a pretty sufficient um, pace. That's a little bit of an asset, but still, you know, I think you guys can do the numbers here yourself you're entering a little bit of a crunch where it's like, okay, this is the team. Um, there's going to be a definitive ceiling for it. You know, the people don't continue to grow exponentially or linearly. Do you want to continue down the path where you just have this team and all it does is it gets more expensive. Now you're going to shuffle the pieces around them. CJ McCollum is an expiring in 25, 26. And, um, you know, JJV is going to be out most likely. They're going to have some kind of rotating centers. Larry's probably going to be gone. You got to figure out what to do with Dyson. Um, you know, those are those are things they have to consider. But, uh, you know, that that's a very likely thing. I think it's the most likely thing that's going to happen this season. They're going to run it back. Um, that That's one of their options. The the other option, you know, the one that's that's obviously being discussed uh, ad nauseum is, is the Scoot Henderson uh, you know, getting in on the Scoot Henderson sweepstakes, resetting your contract situation a little bit. I think this one is attractive to me personally because it buys you time in this next two-year window uh, where you can become asset flexible and salary flexible uh, and, and reset your, your contract clocks. And so uh, what I mean by that is Scoot Henderson being on a rookie scale contract, if he's the prospect that you think that he's going to be, the Pelicans can put themselves in a position where if he's on the books instead of one of their, you know, main stars, uh, I think we all know who I, I would prefer they keep, but you know, uh, that's a decision they, they would have to make. Um, but if he's on the books instead of one of their main stars, then the Pelicans can wait out this sort of arms race from the contenders over the next two years. And, and then when 25, 26 comes around, the salary jumps, uh, you know, approximately 10% because of new media, uh, media deals coming in. Um, then the Pelicans can pounce in my opinion and be aggressive about acquiring players, acquiring, um, contracts that these teams want to shed to really, you know, build their team and then try to peak while, uh, Scoot Henderson's peaking, uh, Trey Murphy is peaking, Herb Jones is peaking. And in my, you know, preferred opinion, uh, Zion would be peaking. You'd be building around Zion's contractual timeline. He would be still on the books. You still have the benefit of having him on the 25% max contract, as opposed to having to pay uh, Brandon Ingram that 30% uh, at the new cap money, right? That 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 is a little bit um, more difficult to deal with than, than Zion's contract, but that's, that's my preferred build. But I think this is something the Pelicans need to keep in mind and, and see how the Western conference is going to play out. I don't mind if they just make the playoffs the next couple of years, but really the, this two years from now is when they should be preparing to strike. That is when the new media deal kicks in. That is when they should prepare to have the most amount of assets and flexibility to, to really re, uh, launch themselves into contender status. Anyways, thanks for listening.